And then five big beasts, as they're called, of the Labour Party have given their backing to the Prime Minister's negotiations with Europe, the group who were all against joining the European community or staying in it in 1975, have signed an open letter arguing the case for remaining in the EU. I'm joined now by one of them, the former Home Secretary, David, now, of course, Lord Blunkett. He's in Derby. A very good morning to you, Lord Blunkett. And a simple question to start. Um, Why have you felt you. the need to write this letter? I think to get across the very simple message that people who were sceptical 40 years ago may still be sceptical of the way in which Europe works as a bureaucracy, and I'm certainly a Eurosceptic, but recognise the catastrophe that would happen if we pulled out of Europe now. 40 years on, globalisation has increased a pace, the whole world is much more insecure despite the collapse of the, uh, the Iron Curtain and the conflict uh, that that brought, we now have, as, as we all know, a threat of entirely new forms of terrorism, organised criminality, the massive people movements that have occurred because of conflicts elsewhere, and we need to be part of the European Union to deal with those enormous issues. Well, there's one uh, name that springs to mind that fits the bill on what you've described, the 40-year the journey. And he is, of course, the current leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. Why hasn't he signed it? Well, because we were dealing with those who'd been dealing, who'd been responsible for and held positions as Home Secretary, who'd been actually involved with, uh, as Home or Foreign Secretaries, the way in which you have to do business uh, with other countries. In other words, the uh, ability to be able to appreciate, and this is quite difficult because we don't want to patronise uh, the, the people we're talking to and those who we want to persuade to vote. We, we're not actually saying to them, at least I, I hope we're not, um, that you know we know best because we've been through this and we know the difficulties of negotiating on our borders, dealing with the cross-border issues, the European-wide challenges. We're not saying listen to us because we're wise, we're saying listen to us because we were sceptical, we've been won over, but we've been won over by a lifetime of experience seeing what's happening. Just take, take the um, border issue yeah. for a moment. Uh, the, if Britain is not part of and cooperating with Europe as a whole in terms of firstly protecting the wider European border and then secondly being able to be part of a European Union where we've put our border controls on French soil, we, we will have no say whatsoever and we'll have no means of preventing people flooding across Europe and into the British Isles. And I think people are really not fully understood just what a catastrophe would happen All right. uh, if uh, those borders were, were simply open to the UK. But you, yeah, just on Jeremy Corbyn, you rather dodge that. I mean, of course, if he did become Prime Minister, he would have to deal, of course, with, with many, many foreign nations. But you're saying the qualification is you either had to be a, a shadow home or foreign secretary. You got Neil Kinnock there. Uh, did you actually ask Jeremy Corbyn to sign the letter? Uh, not as far as I'm aware, because Jeremy had not been in a position of authority over those years. And uh, that's what many what people Hillary liked ben? about him, to be honest, that he was, a, that he was what fresh about Hillary in without ben? the... Uh, what about Hillary? Well, what about Hillary Benn? I mean, he's now the, he's now the foreign affairs... Well, he shot, he shot, he, he shot, he sh yeah, but he, 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 was, he was, although he was a minister, including in my... Uh, team. He was not a. He was not a Home Secretary, was he? All right. Well, you know the, char the charges. I, I mean, do you think? Do you think? think do you think Jeremy here. Corbyn? Do you think Jeremy Corbyn has been as enthusiastic as he could be about remaining in the European Union? Um, I don't think Jeremy's all, ever been terribly enthusiastic about the European Union. But that's not to say he's actually against staying in, is it? And there's lots of people watching this program this morning and millions of people we're going to have to win over who are not enthusiastic, who have been sceptical and in the next whatever months it is, three months, are going to have to be won over if we don't have an economic, a social and an international crisis because our withdrawal from Europe would bring those things inevitably. Just to come back to the point I was making earlier, uh, most countries are concerned with people who come into the country and not those who leave. So when I negotiated with Nicolas Sarkozy, the then Interior Minister in France, 
all those years ago, back in 2002, that we would have immigration and security officers on French soil. That was an enormous step forward, both for the UK and an, in, an enormous commitment by France. And they did it because we were partners. We were literally in this together. They got a problem. We were potentially having a, a massive problem of over 100,000 refugees coming in at that time. Those measures reduced those coming in as refugees to less than 30,000. If we opened those borders again, and that's what it would mean because we'd pull our immigration and security back to Kent, uh, you can imagine just for a moment that the, Fr the French would have no imperative whatsoever okay. to stop people leaving their country. And just a question on that, Lord Brunkett, while we're revisiting the past, do you now think it was an error to not bring in transitional controls when Poland and others joined the European Union when you, of course, were in power? No, I don't, because they'd have run out in 2011 anyway that uh, many of those who came have made a tremendous contribution and have paid taxes and national insurance. Bear in mind this, when, when the... Uh, uh, the, the, the new arrangements came in in 2004, we discovered that 40%, 40% of those who actually registered and uh, therefore were paying tax and national insurance and were counted as new immigrants were actually already in the country, many of them working clandestinely. You either have people working openly uh, with visas and with permission or you have them in the sub-economy under, undercutting rates of pay, undercutting conditions, uh, and all the things that go right. with it. And what about another idea from those times? I remember you were a strong advocate of identity cards, ID cards. It uh, shows who's entitled to be in the country, who's entitled to use the NHS, who's entitled to access benefits. Do you think that should be revisited? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. I would do it a different way now because people panicked over the idea of a, an ID card rather than the fact that you were going to have a clean register of knowing who was here, who was entitled to public services to, to work here and the like, I would simply say that uh, we would have all, all adults would have a passport, 82% do already. Uh, that, that passport would obviously be linked to biometric uh, identifiers and that would be linked to a clean register uh, and that would have got round the problem and we learn as we go along except as Tony Blair once wisely said, uh, we've just learnt how to do things when nobody wants us to do them any longer. <laughs> and just a last thought about uh, Jeremy Corbyn and whether he gets involved in the campaign or not. Do you think he might not even be leader by the time of a referendum? And I'm thinking about the May elections in all their various forms. If uh, there's not a very good showing no, no, from no, Labour, no. do you think he should consider no. his future? No, I'm, I'm not a Corbynist. I didn't vote for Jeremy. I wish him well. There's absolutely no way in which there's going to be a change of leader between now and the referendum. And anybody who thinks there is, is living in cloud cuckoo land. And, and do you think there are those in your party who will uh, look at this, as I say, this big beast's letter and say, well, what are they doing? They're joining a Cameron-led campaign. Oh, I think there's a very real danger, as there was with the uh, Scottish referendum, of people actually using the fact that there's common cause across people of all different political persuasions, mainly on the stay in, but also on the out campaign, and saying, we'll judge you by who you're associating with, rather than by what you're saying and what the outcome will be. I think that's a very real danger, and we've got to face it, and we've got to face people up to the fact that they're making a momentous decision about the future of the country and not about David Cameron and the government, despite the fact that David Cameron forged this referendum and has done what he's done in order to be able to solve problems inside his own party. We're bigger than that. The issue of Britain's place in Europe and the world is bigger than any of this, and that's why we've got to get out there and campaign. Fantastic of you to spare the time to talk to us, Lord Blunkett. Very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.